to we feel like unified entities. I feel like I'm the same person I was yesterday and five years ago and 40 years ago. Yet virtually everything in my body is different. My memories are different. My brain cells are different. What is it about us that can give us this illusion of personal identity? Well, first, I'd say it's not quite true. Some molecules just stay there. I mean, deep down, the bones and things, um, the skin rubs off all the time, but there's something there. But more important, the pat patterns stay there. You know, the many brain structures, they change, but they don't just completely disappear. So there are um, continuities of this body through time. But you're absolutely right. There's no, um, there's no reason to suppose that there is real continuity of a self because if you look at what a body and a brain is, there's no room for a thing called a self that sort of sits in there and has the experiences or sits in there and decides what to do. You know, there isn't. So then the question becomes, well, why does it feel that way? And that to me is the really interesting question. If continuity of self and consciousness is an illusion, why do we think it, it's, it's true? Right. I take a really radical view on this, I think. I do a lot of meditation. I do a lot of practicing mindfulness, being present with what is, a lot of playing around. And it seems to me now that in the normal way of thinking, it's quite easy to think I'm here now. And that was me a few minutes ago, a bit different, but you know, but actually you can, you can see that if you start to look back a moment ago, you can start to see, oh, but I was listen something was listening to that noise out there as well as something was talking, uh, uh, uh. they were, and something's feeling, the, you know, not to have the model of there was a me and it was conscious of this and then it was conscious, of, but to realize that it's a multiple parallel system and actually you can get to feel it that way. I think what happens is that the illusion of continuity is only created when you look for it. When you ask yourself, oh, can I remember what I did this morning? Or can I remember when I was a kid, you make, because this brain can pull up memories, mm. you make this story that I have lived this life and you call something I, you don't know what it is, but you call it I and language is so used to it that you don't realize that's a really bizarre thing to do. So you imagine this continuous kind of stream of consciousness that every day when you're awake, but actually it's not like that at all. Actually, there's just multiple parallel things going on. And every so often we go, oh, <sighs> Oh, that's me, you know, <laughs> and invent this story. And the parallel paths are all the different brain systems, the mm. sensor, the different sensory inputs, yeah. the bodily uh, unconscious things, all happening simultaneously. Yeah, let me give you an example. Think about the visual system. It's thought that there are about 30 or even 40 different pathways going through the brain dealing with vision, some dealing with motion, some with color, some with shape and so on, and they all go in different ways through the brain. But there are two main streams, the dorsal stream and the ventral stream. One devoted largely to perception, to being able to see that those are hands and those are glasses and so on. And the other, dealing with fast action. So when I'm playing ping pong, I love ping pong. A different part of the brain is dealing with it. It's not that I see the ball coming, decide to do this kind of shot, and then it happens. It's way faster. The information has not got to the perception bit by the time the arm's done it. That's what I mean by parallel processing. Now, we tend to tell ourselves these stories that I did it and I hit the ball and so on. What's the I? No, this arm and that system was doing this and this one was thinking about, oh, I wonder if I'm going to win. And th they're all parallel. And I think it is possible more to live your life that way and realize that and drop this sort of idea of, an, of a self that has continuity because it's not there. So the implication would be if the sense of personal identity in this unity is really an illusion and that is really all these parallel systems. The implication is, is that this unity, this elusive unity, really has no possibility of living beyond the bottom. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean, when you see that, when you see the non-existence of the self you thought was so important, then death has no sting anymore. Because there never was a you to die. Every moment <laughs> is just a new story. There's a story being told that has something in common with that story. There's a similarity carrying on. But there's nobody there to tie it together. This so-called me now is really just another reconstruction. There was another one half an hour ago and there'll be another one. But they're not really the same person. They're just stuff happening in the universe.
So there's no one to die. So there's certainly no one to continue after death. What are the implications for free will? Oh, tremendous. Because on this view, there can't be free will in the traditional sense. I mean, free will is all bound up with self. Free will, as most people would have it, is something like I can for no reason at all, not because of, you know, things in my brain or anything else, choose what I want and it's my responsibility. That can't be so when you see how the brain works and how all the information flows through the brain and so on. So let's give up on it. Now, I've taught myself over most of my life because I stopped believing intellectually in free will, you know, as a teenager, really, but then struggled with it. Well, how can you live your life without it? But actually you can. It's really something like telling a different story, telling a story of, well, this person here just does things because of the reasons that are, are there and trusting that actually human nature is not bad, particularly human nature brought up in a civilized way, educated, inquiring, taught by others to be kind and encouraged to, to play your part in society. It's all right. You can let go of free will. But in terms of how I feel phenomenologically, I think I have free will. I know, and I don't and, anymore. It goes and, away. And, and it what, goes away. When you really battle with it, it goes away. It's gone away now. <laughs> I don't get it anymore. <laughs> I still do get a strong sense of self. That's not gone away. I still get the sense of somebody in here. I Intellectually, I think it's an illusion. Psychologically, emotionally, I still feel that I exist. But, what is, what but is free the, will, I don't get caught by. What is the core uh, physiological analysis to, to get rid of free will? That there are multiple things happening all the time. Most of them are not what we would ordinarily call conscious. Lots of them happen very quickly. Others happen very slowly without us being able to know what's going on. These are as much part of us as the tinsy little scrap that we hang on to as being my ideas, my decisions. My... And that... it's all of these things working together in some incredible parallel pathways simultaneously that, that, make that engender the, the action or the thoughts or the behavior. Yeah. Exactly. And that's how we see it when we look in a brain and understand what's happening. So I'd rather live my life accepting that as the truth to, 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 to be the basis of my life.